All right, hello and welcome to 2022. My name is Shauna. I'm gonna be guiding you through, this is our Fit Essentials Basics class, and we are gonna be using our B3 bands if you have access to them on the upper body. So if you are here, ideally, if you've already put air in, let's take it out and put it in together so that we'll all be wearing air for about the first 20 minutes together. So I've got my bands here. I'm wearing some 200s. I know some of you have some 150s. So with that in mind, the first thing you're gonna do is line it up snap it in by just pushing it in there and you want to hear it to literally snap and that one got a little bit off so i'm going to push that nozzle if i need to pull it out so it goes in you can physically hear it audibly hear a click and then if i try to pull on it it's not going to easily pull off either from there now i'm going to take myself up to the 200 if you have a 150 set just go to the 150. So i go 200 on that side if you've been using them for a while and want to go a little bit past the mark that they recommend, it's totally safe to do that as well. But most of you are in your first couple of weeks using these. So please just stick with the recommended to start with. Same thing on the other side, click it in, pump it up. And then I push in the silver nozzle and pull it off. Diane, how are you doing? You got yours pumped in? If you have a friend nearby, sometimes it's always easier somebody else. But go ahead, and those of you that are on here live, just give me a thumbs up when you are ready. And you're fine to sit there. Yeah. Set it. Okay, ready. Super. Diane's got the thumbs up here. Good to have you here in person. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona today. A little bit chillier weather, but really grateful for the sunshine. All right, got thumbs up from Shirley. Fantastic. And Amy's ready to go too. When you do get yourself in position, go ahead and come on up to standing. We're gonna do a little bit of our typical warm up with our spinal cord breathing. So a little bit of mobility, and then we'll get moving into our first series. So you're gonna set your feet about hip width apart. Draw your midline in to make sure you're not arching your low back. And then as you breathe in, you're gonna circle your hands around, bring your palms of your hands together, draw your forearms and elbows together. And now as you exhale, pull your belly in toward your chest and just think about kind of bowing to a little bit of a fetal position here, blowing the air out and then deep breath in through the nose as you circle the arms, engage the glutes, lift your chest and eyes up towards the sky. Good, just watch so you don't over arch that low back and then exhale, draw it back down and in, chin to the chest, trying to gently breathe out through the mouth and in through the nose. Let's go two more cycles here. Nice, deep, cleansing breath in. And please feel free to move at your own rhythm. Looking up towards the sky, bowing down and forward as you breathe out, chin to the chest, really blow the air out of the lungs. One more time, breath in, circle the arms, squeeze the shoulders back and down. Beautiful, and then last exhale. Try to get a little bit more air out of the lungs. When you finish that exhale, drop the arms to the thighs and stand up nice and tall. All right, good job. From here, just take into a little bit of a side step, arm swing, cross the arms in front of the body and open up through the chest. All right, very good. Side step in here, arms cross in front, arms open up. Fantastic. From here, we're gonna walk those feet and bring the arms up to the side. And now we're gonna move into our march and punch. If you wanna go a little bit faster with the legs, you can add a little skip to it. But with our basics class, we demo more of the marching style and really get that breathing going now. Exhale as you punch across the body. Good, couple more. Wonderful. Walk, set the feet about hip width apart. Go ahead and make a fist with your hands. You're gonna be mirroring me. So you're gonna bring your hand down to your left hip. I'm on the right. And then we're gonna do a cross body chop coming over your opposite shoulder. Send those hips back, hand to the thigh, up and across. Good. Breathe in as you bow forward. Exhale as you throw the water over the shoulder. Good, long spine, I'll show you from the side. Exhale, driving across. Couple more, down, send those hips back and across. Beautiful, last time. Nice, in between sides, up and over the head, 
You can do a jumping jack if you want, but I want you to take your index fingers, touch them together as you reach overhead, and then touch them together as you reach in front of your body. Good. Nice. Yeah, so down in front, bring the hands in front of the body, touch your little finger, index fingers, and then up to overhead. Good, couple more down in front and up to overhead. And uh, cause we always say, if you feel off in your rhythm, just laugh at yourself. <laughs> All righty, cross body chop the other side, reestablish those feet, draw the midline in, make the fist. Now it's gonna be your right hip over your left shoulder. Good, hips push back, down and across. So we're down, you can pivot the feet a bit and across. Good, over and up nice down and up good job keep that movement here a couple more breathe in good job shirley one more breathe in reach down exhale drive across nice shake out those arms bring those arms out to the side shoulders down out of the ears and either our step overs or our side steps so we can move those hands as well so I can imagine you have like a little, I'm off on my hands. There we go, open and close. Nice, open and close. All right, almost there. On our last exercise here of this series, we're gonna be doing a toe touch to an overhead reach. So kind of warming up a little bit more bending movements. I want you to take a wide base stance here. So it'll be like a sumo toe touch. Send your hips back, reaching down for the floor, touch the waist, and then reach those hands up to overhead. Beautiful. Reaching down, send the butt back, touch the hips, engage those glutes, look up towards the ceiling. Nice, reaching forward, bowing down, and you can move faster or slower, just depending upon what's best for your body. Long spine as you reach down, engage those glutes as you reach up. Nice, one or two more. Good job, Diane. Last one and pause. All right, shake out those arms. If you wanna grab a quick drink, you can. We'll be back to that march and punch here in about 20 seconds. I know it got chilly. All right, I'm gonna be demoing without weight on this set, but anyone that has like little light weights that's more experienced with these bands, you wanna hold some light weights when you do these movements, you totally can. Start with that march and punch, arms up to the side, and here we go. Getting some cross crawl work in here. Opposite hand, reaches across that midline of the body, nice. Those eyes up. Try to lift the foot and toes as you lift your knee. Good. If you are holding those light weights, you can go ahead and hold on to both. Grab them right between the hands. We're gonna do that cross body chop. Coming down to your left hip and throwing the water over your right shoulder. Good job. Send the butt back as you bow down from the one hip over the opposite shoulder. Very nice. Down and up. So allow your Right foot for us, and me and Diane, left foot for those of you on screen to pivot a little bit, sending the butt back. And you can just slightly pivot on that left foot. It's a really good opener for your hip. One or two more, down, hips back and up. Good job. In between sides, our step jacks or our overhead reaches. So index fingers come together in front of the body and up to overhead. Very nice. If you still hold those light weights, you're welcome to hold on to them as long as you're comfortable with them. Nice. Little elbow bend here. 10 more seconds. Breathe through it. Good. Nice. All right. And then we're going to go cross body chop on the other side. So either fist, interlace the hands or hold your weights. We're going to come down to your right hip and then throw the water over your left shoulder. Very nice. So I pivot through my Right foot for those of you on screen, left foot for Diane and I. Hips back, reach down, over the opposite shoulder. Beautiful, great job. Breathe in as you bow down. Exhale as you throw that water over the shoulder. Couple more. Wonderful. Down, across, last one. And shake it out, good job. Feel free to keep holding on to those weights. Open it up 
and closing it down. Open and close. You're comfortable on your feet. You can imagine that little hurdle coming up and over with the feet. Shoulders back and down. And two, one, and rest. Good job. Just our toe touch to finish this series. Bring your feet a little bit closer this time. So draw your belly in, walk those feet in so those toes point forward. And now we're gonna slide the hands down, reaching down for the feet. Engage those glutes, touching the hips and raising those hands up to overhead. So if you wanna use a light weight here, you could, or just reaching with your hands, reaching through the ground. Engage those glutes and reach up to overhead. I'll show you what it would look like with some weight here. Bring the weight up up to the shoulders, up to overhead. Let's go about another 10 to 15 seconds here, bowing down, grabbing a little bit of weight, reaching up. Nice, good Shirley, good Amy, long spine, send those hips back. Last one, gauge those glutes as you reach up. All right, if you were holding any weight, shake it out, set it down, back to that water glass real quick. And then we're gonna do one stretch here on both sides of the body, and then we're gonna get into our next series. We're gonna to look to use some light weights in this next series. We're gonna be working a dumbbell row. If you don't have any weights, if you wanna use bands, you could also use a band, but I'm gonna prefer some lighter dumbbells. All right, but first I said we would stretch. We're gonna open up our hip flexors. Mirror me if you're on the screen, set your left foot forward, step your right foot back. Rock that heel down so that right heel is down on the ground. Go ahead and raise your arms up to overhead, or you can cross them over your shoulders, depending on your preference. Send those hips forward, lifting the chest. Very good, and now you're gonna rotate your body towards your front foot. Squeeze the glute of that trail leg, and breathe as you look over the shoulder of your front leg. Go ahead and unwind the body, rest those arms down for a second. We're gonna do it one more time. Raise the arms up either to your shoulders or all the way to overhead. Send that back hip forward, squeeze the glute, keep that heel planted of that lead leg, and now rotate. Very nice, Diane. Lifting the chest, looking up and over that shoulder of the front leg. One more breath here. Unwind and release the arms. Good job, walk that back foot forward in between sides. Little hip circle here. Three to five times each way. Switch directions when you're ready. Let's loosen up that low back, loosen up the hips. We're getting ready for some dumbbell rows or banded rows and some squat work next. So now we'll do hip opener on the other side. Anchor down your right foot. Step your left foot back, either over the shoulders or raise those arms up to overhead. Good. With that chest tall, you're gonna send that back hip forward, squeeze the glute of your left hip, and now turn your body, turning it towards your right side. Trying to find the glute muscle of that left hip. Try to squeeze it. Invite the front of the hip to open. Unwind. Lower those arms down. We'll do it one more time. Send the hips back. Push that back hip forward as you raise your arms up, either on the shoulders or up to overhead. And now with that hip engaged, turn your torso. Looking over that front shoulder. Turn the head and neck. Breathe as you squeeze. Unwind and release. Great work. All right. We're going to start here in about 20 seconds. You're going to use a light weight. We're going to be working for a full minute on this first interval. It's going to be a dumbbell row on that non dominant arm. So you can hold on with a stagger stance or you can support the hand on the table and row just like so. This is how we most commonly have done it. I'm going to demo from that stagger stance. And then, Diane, if you want to use the table, that'd be great. All right, starting in three, two, one, and here we go. We're gonna be working for a full minute here, but if you need to have a break before you get there, you know, just build your body into it. We're going up and down with this dumbbell row, reaching forward, drawing that elbow up nice and high. Good. First 20 seconds done. Nice. Nice fluid motion. Looks great, Diane. 
Once you know the movement, try to look down at your lead leg if you're in a stagger stance or your support hand. Just hold your head nice and neutral. Good. We're over halfway. That's 40 seconds. Whew. I'm feeling a bit of a burn here. Breathe through it. You feel something happening, Diane? Feeling a burn? <laughs> we were talking this morning. So I don't know if I've ever felt a burn. All right, couple more. And two, one, and rest. Set your weight down. In between sides, we're gonna be doing some squatting. You can squat to a chair and stand up, or you can squat without the chair. So if you wanna squat to a chair, when you're ready, you sit back and stand up. Here we go. Reach those arms out. Weight lift, send the weight back into your heels, standing tall. So either a little squat to the chair and stand. Very good. Or working that full range. I don't want you to be going so fast that you feel like you don't have good and strong mechanics. But those of you that feel confident in your squats, you can start to work that tempo just a little bit. You can start to focus on pulling yourself down as you push your knees out, push your feet into the floor. That's 40 seconds now. Remember, we're going for a full minute here. Very nice, drawing that belly in and your feet planted. Beautiful squats, Diane. Woo, 10 seconds. When we finish these squats, we're going back to our dumbbell row on the opposite arm. Two, one, and transition. Shake it out. Feel free to grab a quick drink. We'll start in 10 seconds. So either one hand supports on a surface or standing in a stagger stance. Two, one, and here we go. Chin in, looking down at that front foot or that support hand. Elbow draws nice and high. It's our first of three sets. Each interval is gonna get a little bit shorter here today. Round one, we're working for a full minute on each side. Good. A lot of postural work here when we're working these dumbbell rows. So we're activating that mid back. Certainly more than that as well. Your triceps are working. Your biceps are certainly working here as you pull that arm up and in. We're over halfway, everyone. Keep breathing, draw that chin in, activate the front of the neck. Hold that spine nice and neutral and keep engaged that belly as well. So pulling the belly in towards your spine. Woo. Breathe out as you pull that arm up and in. And two, one and rest. Woo. Shake it out. So those of you that are strong in your planks and you wanna to go to the floor, you can come down to your forearms. Those of you working more of an elevated position, hands on a chair, tabletop, back of the couch. And here we go, looking to hold for a minute. Good, so either on the hands or you, if you feel secure, if you wanna give your wrist a break, you can hold like a forearm plank. That's kind of hard to see here, but I could be on my forearms on the tabletop or on the bench, but sometimes it feels best to be just up on those hands, lifting up to that mid back, halfway through. You wanna make it a little bit more of a challenge. You can start to lift the knees up. Second half, you can work a little bit of a mountain climber. But I want you to focus, if you are choosing the practice of this mountain climber, not to let your hips wobble around a lot and really lift up through those arms. So keep those elbows straight. Keep that belly drawn in. We have 15 seconds left. You're choosing that mountain climber option. Breathe out as you draw that knee up. Two, one, and everybody rest. All right, let's grab a drink. We're gonna take 20 seconds. Lead back to that dumbbell row. Now we go into round two. We're gonna work for 45 seconds. All right, starting on that non-dominant arm. Three, two, one. Back to our dumbbell row. Non-dominant arm, switch your leg. There you go. <laughs> yep. 
So if you hold it in the right hand, yep. <laughs> Elbow pulls up. There, you got it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good job. Nice position, Shirley. Looks great, Amy. Just watch that shoulder doesn't start to sneak in up into the ears. We want to think long neck here. Keep that shoulder down out of the ear. Also, the head will start to drop forward towards the floor. So keep the chest broad as you draw the chin in. Don't let that head and neck get lazy. We build some strength in the front of the neck. That's gonna help our posture of our upper spine. Good, we're almost there. Three, two, one, and rest. If you wanna continue to hold weights for your squats, you can, but I'm gonna just go unweighted today. Not just, I'm going to go unweighted in my squats today. Set the feet, and when you're ready, reach your arms up as you lower your hips back. Good. Totally appropriate to just sit down in a chair and stand up as well. Nice work. Arms reach out. The nice fluid movement. Beautiful, good, Diane. Nice tempo, Shirley. There's our 30 seconds. We're looking for about a 45 second interval this time. Mechanics are always our first level of importance. Three, two, one, and transition. Coming back to that dumbbell row on the second arm. This will be our last exercise before we take the air out. The long base stance, two, one, here we go. Breathe as you draw that elbow nice and high. Nice. Good lock out of that support arm, Shirley. There you go, Amy, pull that chin in so the neck's not extended, looking down. That looks better, yep. Keep that breathing going. Here's 30 seconds in, 15 seconds left. Really focus to squeeze that shoulder blade in towards your spine at the top. Wonderful, one or two more. Two, one, and rest. Good job. We're gonna go ahead and take the air out and then we're gonna go to the plank. So you're gonna keep the bands on and just push that little nozzle in and you should audibly hear the air release. So I just push the thumb right on the tip. Let that air come out. All righty. And then we'll go ahead and continue. We're gonna come back to that forearm plank, either down on the floor or an elevated plank on the hands. Go ahead and set the hands, walk the feet back. And two, one, here we go. Upwards of 45 seconds here. Keep those arms nice and straight. Once again, if you want to do the option of the mountain climber, you can gently pull those knees up as you breathe out. But the number one thing here is low back position. So we'll, sometimes we'll see those hips drop in. It's going to put a strain on that lower spine. So keep those hips elevated up. Looking straight down between the hands. Three, two, one, and rest. Good job. So that is set two. Now we have a 30 second interval. And if you have some heavier weights available for your dumbbell rows, since we've let the air out of the bands, you can go to your heaviest weight that you feel comfortable with for our 30 second interval. Let's grab a drink and we'll start here in 15 seconds. There you go. All right, non-dominant arm. This will be our 30 second interval. Back to that dumbbell row. Three, two, one, here we go. Elbow nice and high. And now if I have the option for the heavier weights, I'm going with a little bit heavier weight. When you're using those blood flow resistance bands, you wanna be using weights that you can comfortably do 20 to 30 reps. And you go without the bands, or without the air in the bands, if you have the option of a little bit heavier weights, then we can pick up a little bit heavier and challenge the body that way. Two, one, and rest. 
Coming back to our squats with or without weight. I'm gonna hold a little bit of weight this time. This will be our last little bit of squatting for today. Set the feet, eyes up and forward. And when you're ready, push your knees wide, draw the belly in, good. And either a faster pace or a slower pace. You kind of see where your body feels today. If you're not holding weight so surely, there you go. Still reach those arms out, perfect. 10 seconds. Good, focus on that full range, trying to get your hips as low as you can. Push your feet into the ground as you stand and rest. All right, dumbbell row. Final time now on your opposite arm. All right, coming down in position. Two, one, here we go. 30 seconds here. That shoulder down out of the ear. And how high can you pull that elbow? Good. Draw the chin in towards your chest. Imagine how long you want your neck to be. Putting the back of the head. So if I pull that chin in, it's gonna open up that upper neck a little bit. Good, a couple more. And there's our 30 seconds there. Beautiful. Just that plank to finish. Let's make it a mountain climber on this last set. Spread those hands nice and wide as you come down either on the ground or the elevated surface. And here we go. Draw the knee up towards the chest. All the while, pull that belly in. Breathe out as you pull that knee up. Good. And don't let those arms sink down. Keep yourself elevated in that upper body. 10 more seconds. We gave you a little bit longer than 30 on this last round. Two, one, and everybody done. All righty, that finishes that circuit. Take it out. We're gonna do a little stretch. If you wanna take these bands all the way off your arms, that was a great time to do that. Go ahead and just take the Velcro off. And then you ideally wanna put them somewhere flat and just make sure all the air is out. So I could push this down. Flatten them out and I'm just going to set them on my table. These can be disinfected as well. You can just spray some disinfectant on it, just like you would clean your house or gym equipment and wipe them down. Now that you've got a little, possibly have a little bit of sweat on there. I know mine are a little bit moist now. Yeah. And then go ahead and meet me in the chair. We're going to do some stretching from a seated position next. Just cool enough for the, as my grandma always said, for the sap to be running, meaning my nose. All right, as you come, either a seated position or if you know the cat cow from all fours, you're welcome to come on down to all fours. We're gonna be demo from seated here today. So sit up on those sit bones, go ahead and place your hands on your knees. And then similar to that cat cow, as you draw your chin into your chest, you're gonna roll the shoulders forward, breathing out. And then as you breathe in, Pull your shoulders back, slide the hands up the thighs and lift the head and chest. Good, about three more times there. Exhale, draw that belly in, bow the head down. Trying to breathe in through the nose, nice deep cleansing breath. Good, one or two more times. Exhale, blow the air out. Inhale, lift the chest. And final time. Good. Sit up nice and tall. Good. From here, you can drop back into child's. Amy on all fours. Those of you that are here seated, slide the hands down the shins, reaching for the toes. Just looking to get a gentle stretch in that low back and then try to send your breath into the back of the rib cage and the side of the rib cage. So trying to expand your lungs on the exhale. See if your body wants to come a little bit closer to the floor. Two more breaths here. Deep breath in, <laughs> smooth breath out. Good, when you're ready, go ahead and come up to a seated position, either in the chair or on the floor. We're gonna stretch our triceps next. 
So sit up nice and tall, draw the shoulders back and you're gonna raise one arm straight up in the air. Draw your chin in towards your chest as you bend that arm like you're trying to scratch your back. And we're gonna reach up and around. And now here is where it's common to kind of lose it all forward. So lift up to that chest, long spine as you pull that elbow back. And if you're okay to hold this position, you can bend away from that side, add a little bit of a side stretch to it. So I'll breathe in as I come back to center, draw that chin back in, reestablish that posture, and then a soft exhale as I bend to the side, away from the side that I'm stretching. One more time, sit tall, and a soft exhale. In between sides, going to release your arms, shake them out. We're going to do some straight arm raises, straight up in front of the body, spread those hands nice and wide, draw them back. Good, lower the hands down, we do that twice more. And then nice straight arms, raise them up, draw the belly in as you draw them back behind you. Beautiful, lower them down, last time. Breathe in, raise up, and release. Good job, all right, let's balance out that upper body with the tricep stretch on the opposite side. Chin in, reach straight up towards the sky trying to scratch your back on that side and then reaching around. Watch that head and neck posture. Good, sitting up tall. So either stay here or now you'll bend away towards that opposite side. Breathe in as you sit tall and a nice soft exhale as you bow away. Good, one more. and release the arms, beautiful. All right, we can do one more stretch from seated. Loose that out of the way. So Amy, if you wanna come back to all fours, I'll come down and show you for a second. Those of you in the chair, it's gonna be this version here. You're gonna bring your elbow across, sitting tall, and then turn the body just like so. If I'm comfortable to be on all fours, I'm gonna take the one hand behind the head, elbow comes to the opposite elbow, and now I lift up just like so, peering up past that arm. Whichever version you choose, let's get about five times each side. As you bring the elbow closer to the midline of the body, you're gonna breathe in and then breathe out on that rotation, following the elbow with your eyes. Breathe in as you close your body, breathe out as you open your body, beautiful. After five on one side, go ahead and switch sides. Same thing other way. And when we're doing this seated, I like to use the hand that's not behind the head to just set it on the inside of the knee and give a little overpressure to get that rotation. So breathe in, cross it over, breathe out as you rotate. Love you, love you. Good job. And when you finish this rotation, you can either drop back into child for those of you on the floor, or we're gonna repeat that toe touch from the seated position. All righty, so sitting up nice and tall, draw the belly in as you either drop back in a child position or lower the hands towards the feet. And then just depend upon your energy today, your timeline for today. If you wanna conclude this session here, fantastic work. If you wanna stay with us a little bit longer, we're gonna come back up to our feet here in a second and work a little bit of balance and a little bit more upper body. We'll be doing some band pull aparts um, as well as some balancing work. So feel free if anyone wants to move on. Otherwise, those of you who are seated with me, we're gonna warm up the lower body a little bit with some ankle rolls. So go ahead and lift the one leg up, draw the shoulders back and let's roll that ankle around. If anyone wants to do this from standing, that's a choice as well. And you're between five to 10 circles, one direction. And then when you're ready, we'll rotate that ankle the other way, five to 10 times the other way. Good, so I wouldn't hold on to your foot if you're standing arms out to the side. <laughs> there you go. Nice job, Diane. When you're ready, let's switch feet. Same thing, other side. So if you're in the chair, then I grab onto my knee. If I'm standing tall, arms out to the sides. <laughs> Good. Switch directions that ankle, roll it the other way. Keep lifting up if you're standing tall. Super job and set that foot down. 
All right, if you are seated in the chair with me, go ahead and join me back to standing. We're gonna be doing our tandem stance exercise. We'll be working 30 seconds on each side. So for the tandem stance, you wanna imagine that you're practicing walking on a balance beam. So you're gonna set your left foot in front. I'm gonna be mirroring you. And then you're gonna bring your right foot as close behind you as you can. So try to bring that toe right behind the heel. Draw the belly in, stack your shoulders right over top of your hips. And then we're gonna bring those arms out to the sides, palms up. And then we're just gonna stand nice and tall, looking forward. Those of you that feel secure here, if you wanna challenge yourself a little bit more, close your eyes and then see how your balance feels. Keep drawing the belly in, squeezing your shoulders back. We are halfway through. Nice job. Don't let those shoulders start to sink up into the ears. Keep them down, broad open chest and two, one and release. Go ahead and step that back foot out. If your band is nearby, we're gonna do our band pull aparts next. So go ahead and pick up your band and it's gonna be a supinated pull apart. So you're gonna hold the band in your hands with the palms up. If you don't have a band, you can mimic just as if you do and you'll still get a good benefit. Nice straight arms. You're gonna bring the little fingers together in front of your body. And now just like it sounds, pulling the band apart. If you want it to be harder, take a little bit closer grip and then shorten that band. Good, squeeze the glutes. Couple of things that we wanna be aware of here. We don't wanna shrug up and in. I also don't wanna rotate my shoulders forward. So think broad open chest, forward reach, and then pulling it open, good. Forward reach and drawing it back, nice. So we're doing the palms up version. If your palms are facing down, that's okay too. Couple more. Close, open, and rest. All right, set that band down. We're gonna go to our tans stance on the opposite side, which means that those of you on the screen are gonna place your right foot forward. Diane and I are gonna have our left foot forward. So set that foot down, step that opposite foot as close behind as you can, stack the shoulders over the hips, stand up nice and tall, draw the belly in and arms are gonna come out to the side. Here we go, 30 seconds starts now. So here I am trying to squeeze my glutes, squeeze those shoulders. If I want that extra challenge, I can close those eyes. Just keep lifting up tall towards the sky. Halfway through. Using your muscle, lifting up, readjusting that wobble. And three, two, one, and rest. Good job, take your time, walk the feet out. And now you're gonna take a nice wide base stand. So we're gonna work some windmills next. So with the feet outside my hips, a little bit wider, Diane, keep walking those feet out. There you go. Bend into your knees, reach your arms out once again. And now we're gonna send our hips back as you reach your hand towards your opposite knee. Good, squeeze the glutes standing tall. Same thing, other side, long spine, a little bit more bend in those knees, Diane, as you send the hips back. And you can look to reach a little bit lower each time. So you can reach to the outside of the shin, making your way down to the floor if you have that type of range of motion in your hamstrings and low back area. But the focus is that long spine position. So really pushing the butt back. If you feel a little bit of a stretch in the hamstrings as you send those hips back, about another 10 seconds here. Squeeze the booty as you stand tall. Good, one more. And go ahead and rest. Nice job. All right, let's grab a quick drink and then we're gonna do that circuit one last time, starting back with our tandem stance. <laughs> yeah, drink or tissue on the nose, whatever you need. All right, on round two, if you were practicing your tandem stance with the eyes closed and you felt like you could use a bigger challenge, then you're welcome to do a single leg balance where you literally stand on the one leg and balance there. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to practice to, or demonstrate the tandem stance. Starting in 10, you're gonna have your left foot forward. So that means Diane and I on our right foot forward. Set that foot down, step the other one behind. Draw that belly in as you stack those shoulders over the hips. And here we go. Round two. If the eyes are open, you're looking forward. And once again, we gave that option of that single leg stance. If you wanna change it up to that single leg stance, halfway through. 
So this is where I like to pretend I'm that marionette puppet and I've got strings coming down from the heavens, lifting me up without shrugging the shoulders. Almost there, <clears throat> three, two, one, and rest, walk the feet out, grabbing that band, palms up position. So supinated, meaning you're gonna hold that cup of soup with the band, soft bend in those elbows as you bring the little fingers together, check in with that midline posture, draw the belly in, squeeze the glutes, and then here we go. <laughs> hold on strong, <laughs> little fingers come together and squeeze it open, nice. Breathe in as you close the arms, exhale as you pull that band open. Good. 10 more seconds. Making sure you don't let those shoulders roll forward. Open the chest. Last time, two, one, and release. All right, set the band down. We're gonna go to that final balance work your right foot forward or standing on the right leg. That means Diane, we've got the left foot forward. So set that foot forward, set that other foot directly behind if you're choosing that tandem. And three, two, one, 30 seconds starts now. So either we give the tandem option or that single leg stance. 20 seconds left. Squeeze the tush, keep that chest broad, pulling the shoulders back. You wanna feel like your midline is drawing up. So you draw up through the core of your body. Three, two, one, and all done there. Beautiful. We're gonna finish with those windmills. So wide base stance, walk those feet outside the hips. Just think about holding like a little quarter squat here. Just a soft bend in those knees arms wide and this will be our final time here sending the hips back reaching the hand towards that opposite leg good over and up as you stand tall really be intentful to squeeze the back of the body really open yourself all the way up as you stand tall excellent i like to rotate those palms forward as i squeeze those shoulders back let's go about another 10 seconds long spine a little bit more bend in those knees, Diane. So I think soft knee bend, there you go, that's better. Doing great, Shirley, nice job. And three, two, one, and rest. Good job. Walk the feet in, have a little round of applause. Let's get a drink and then we'll finish with some cool down stretches. Now, why do we bend the knees when we do that? Oh, just not to not lock out the knees. So if we lock out the knees, it tends to overarch the back. We keep a nice soft bend the knees, and we usually tend to just hold a little bit better position through that midline. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been told that. Yeah, it's I hear that a lot with people. Yeah. Just a, the habit to kind of lock the knees sometimes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I'm hyperextended, so that's good that I don't know how to get all the way over. <laughs> just ready to move. All right, friends, let's stay tall for a second. And I'd like to stretch out the calves a little bit. So we got the whole little gathering here. So as you stand up, <laughs> and we need to untrap this. And now slingshot yourself with your leash. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna move you over here to the tree real quick. So we're gonna stretch the calves. Moose is getting themselves all tangled around. So Diane, if you wanna use that tree over there, I'm gonna demo on this tree right here. We're gonna start, you can have a doorway somewhere. You're gonna put your heel down put the toe up and then we just want to get a nice stretch for the lower part of the leg. So I'm going to lean into it. I'm even kind of pulling myself into here and I just got this toe propped up my tree here. Yep. So right up the side of the wall, side of the tree, feel that lower calf, just try to lengthen. If you do have a stair nearby, you could also lower the heel off the step. When you're ready, go ahead and switch sides. Same thing, other side, heel down, toe up the side of the wall or this kind sole of a tree I have here. Same thing, other side. <laughs> I don't think we brought the big one. 
and release that foot. Very nice. From here, we're gonna do that mid back opener. So stay at your wall, place your hand about shoulder height, walk the feet back. And now you can use the back of a chair as well. We're gonna hold on and lower ourselves down. Pull that belly in. Just a very soft bend in the knees. And depending upon your comfort level, if you wanna kind of feel what it feels like to extend those knees and then softly bend, you wanna think about lowering your heart towards the floor without overarching your low back. So pull the belly in and just guide your chest forward. Breathing here, maybe two more breaths. When you're ready, go ahead and come on up, walk those feet in. Nice job. All right, we're gonna make it back to the chair or on the floor, we're gonna do a seated figure four to finish. <laughs> Moose is making his way towards Diane's net. All right, so I'm gonna have Diane sit on the chair and do our figure four, and I'm gonna sit on the ground and do our figure four. Be one of our last ones. Well, I don't think all right, if you're seated in a chair or on the floor. We're going to start with the one foot. I'll work my right. So be your left if we're mirroring each other. Go ahead and cross your foot over the opposite knee. So I'm on the chair. I'm already there. If I'm here on the floor. I'm going to inch that opposite leg up, lift the chest. And now if you're in the chair, you can gently put the hand on the knee. Now we're just opening up that outer hip. This is a spoiled boy. Everybody takes care of that puppy dog here. <laughs> Just took over Diane's mat and everything. He's having fun. <laughs> That's right. He has lots of fun. A couple more breaths. And when you're ready, go ahead and release. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So sit up nice and tall, up on those sit bones, cross that opposite foot over. If you're in the chair, you can place that hand on the knee. If you're here on the ground with me, we're going to inch that foot up. Hi, Mr. Moose. <laughs> He's like, how about this, Matt? He's getting that stretch. That's right. Moose is a really good stretcher. He, he demonstrates what we all need to be doing every day. As soon as he wakes up in the morning, before he gets up out of his bed, he does what we call his little kitty cat stretch, goes into down dog, right? It's always that reminder for all of us that we need to stretch when we wake up in the morning. Instinctive for animals. Probably would be for us too if we didn't get caught into our to-do list. Let's go ahead and release that side. <sighs> All right, everybody. And then we'll just finish with a little bit of upper body focus here. So you can stay in the chair, hit it there or on the ground. If you're comfortable to sit on your feet, whatever you like. We're going to go chin down to the chest, looking down. Go ahead and look on up towards the sky. Once more with a little bit of overpressure as you choose. Sit tall, chin down. You can take your fingertips ever so lightly on the top of the head. And then as you look up, you'll cross the hands over just in front of the collarbones, give a little bit of a downward tissue pull, and then you'll lift the chin from there. Good, release the hands. Next, go ahead and take your right hand to the shoulder. I want you to roll that shoulder back and think about tractioning that arm down. You can just extend the arm there, pull it out to the side. And now you're gonna draw the chin in towards the chest, lower the chin down towards your opposite collarbone. So if it's your right arm extended, you're gonna look down towards your left collarbone. And you can use the middle finger of your left hand, bring it up and just ever so softly, give a little bit of overpressure on the top of the head and get a nice stretch there through that trap area where your shoulder connects into your neck. No forcing, I can't emphasize that enough. Just be gentle. When you're ready, go ahead and release out of there. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So you're gonna bring your hand to the shoulder, roll that shoulder back and down. Think about drawing it down, you can extend that arm. Now we'll go chin to the chest, looking down, and then slightly turn the head like you're trying to bring your chin to the opposite collarbone. So again, if it's your left arm extended, you're gonna bring the chin to the right collarbone. 
or the opposite. And then a little bit of overpressure, middle finger, with that opposite hand. Very gentle here. And when you're ready, go ahead and release. Beautiful. All right, forward and back, just roll those shoulders back and down. So if you feel tense later in the day, remember some of these stretches that we do. When your body feels tense, that's just your little cue as a reminder to like, hey, we are needing some movement here. We need to move the body, keep it all fluid. All right, our final finishing breaths together. So go ahead and rotate your palms forward, sit up nice and tall, breathing in through the nose, elevate those shoulders up and into the ears. And exhale, guide those shoulders back and down. So twice more, in through the nose and out through the mouth. Good, use your breathing. Breathe in love and breathe out all the stress, worry, conflict. All right, everybody, give yourself a little round of applause. Thank you so much for being here today. Pleasure to move with you in the new year. Remember hydration, especially with the weather getting colder, it's so easy to lose sight of drinking the water. So what I like to do this time of year is I'm drinking lots of warm water. I like to warm up some water, put a little bit of fresh lemon, some uncaffeinated tea, just whatever you need to do to kind of keep some fluids going, keep your body hydrated and also stay warm. Even in Arizona here, it's still chilly in the morning. So take care and remember, enjoy life.